Do you notice how all four oxygens in A are the same? They're all single bonded. They all have six dots around them. So we're just going to solve it once and say it counts for all four oxygens to save some time. Okay? Um, so to, and I'm going to like separate this now, but later I'm going to just do it all in one equation. To find the valence electrons that are assigned, so that's valence electrons of assigned, um, the equation, if we go back, the equation was all of the dots on the oxygen plus one half times the number of electrons in a bond connected to that oxygen. Okay, so currently on all four oxygens, they have how many dots on each one? Six. So it'll be six plus one half times, and then how many electrons in a bond? Two. two. So one half times two. I don't know why I put that extra one there, sorry. So one half times two is one, so that's a grand total of seven? Because six plus one is seven. Okay, so that tells us the valence electrons assigned. So now to find the formal charge, we take the free electrons from the periodic table minus this assigned number. So how many electrons does, how many valence does oxygen have? Six. So because it's in 6a, so it will take six minus seven to give us negative one. Okay, so uh, sometimes you'll see on pictures that uh, you actually write this formal charge next to every atom that it is associated with. So I'm going to put it in like little parentheses, put a negative one by all four oxygens. So later on, if you ever come back to this, you know that every oxygen has a negative one formal charge. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for sulfur. So for sulfur, sorry, <clears throat> the assigned, we have to do the valence electrons of the assigned first. Does it have any free dots around sulfur? No. no. So that would just be a zero plus one half times how many electrons are in bonds? Yeah, two. And then we have four total bonds. So that would be a total of eight, right? So then 8 divided by 2 would be 4. So then with that 4, now to find the formal charge of sulfur, how many valence electrons does sulfur have on the periodic table? 6. It's in the same row or same column as oxygen. So we'll take 6 minus 4 is positive 2. So since it's technically a charge, we're going to put plus 2s and minus 2s. Kind of thing. So that tells us that sulfur has a formal charge of plus two. Now, right away, this is kind of telling me that this is not a very good structure because we have a plus two. The negative ones might be okay, but since sulfur is plus two, there's probably a better way to group everything. Okay, so now let's do all of that again for the other one, B. Now, to save us some time, Looking at the two single bonded oxygens, are they the exact same as the single bonded oxygens in A? Yes. yes, so we have already figured out their formal charge. Let's not do more work. We already know that both of the single bonded oxygens have a formal charge of negative one. So save some time, okay? Um, but now let's do it for the double bonded oxygen. So I'm gonna put D, B, L for double oxygen case you don't understand my method, okay? Um, so for the valence electron assigned for the double, we have four electrons as dots on the oxygen, each oxygen, and then that's plus one half times, there's two bonds, so that's a total of four electrons in the bond. So the valence electron assigned would be six. Is that right? Okay. So then for the formal charge of the oxygens double bonded, we know that oxygens start with six. Minus six would be zero. Okay. So the two double bonded oxygens have a formal charge of zero. 
questions about that? Am I going too fast? It's like a lot of little work to get to what you need. Okay, so then for the sulfur, it's different than the other ones, so we have to do it separate. Um, do you guys mind if I just make one big equation for a formal charge and just throw all the numbers in instead of doing two separate equations? Is that okay? Um, so for the formal charge, we know sulfur contains seven, or sorry, six valence electrons. It contributes minus. Now we know there are zero dots around sulfur, but we have to take one half times two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons in bonds. So one half times twelve would be six, and six minus six is zero. So that tells us the formal charge of sulfur is zero. Okay, so um, from this, doing these formal charges, B is going to be more appropriate. So to answer the question, B is more appropriate because the sulfur and two of the oxygens are zero for their formal charge, which zero is best. And then the negative ones are on oxygens, which is more electronegative than sulfur. And so that also fits the bill for that, okay? Now for resonance purposes, we know the best structure drawn for sulfate needs to have two oxygens double bonded. But if we look back quickly at this picture that I included of all the sulfates, um, do you notice how all of them have two double bonds, but the double bonds have moved? That shows resonance right there, that we, have two double bonded O's and two single bonded O's, and it doesn't really matter where the single bonds or the double bonds go, as long as we have two and two. Okay, does that make sense? That's what resonance shows. That if I drew it the first way and you drew it the second way, we're still t both technically right, because by formal charges, we would know that that's correct. Okay? Okay, so now we're given a structure, xenon with three oxygens. Um, it's an explosive compound of xenon, which is crazy because xenon is a noble gas. It should not react very well. Which Lewis structure or structures are most appropriate according to formal charges? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to draw four different structures and then test them all. Okay, um, and I don't have very much room, but that's okay. So when we draw them, draw one where there, all the oxygens are single bonded, draw another one where one oxygen is double bonded, a third one where two oxygens are double bonded, and then a fourth one where all three oxygens are double bonded. Okay, so just increase the number of bonds by one each time. And so to make sure that you're getting all the electrons involved, we need to make sure we have our total count available. So xenon has eight, and then there's three oxygens that contribute each six, so that would be a total of 26 electrons in the structures. Okay, so xenon is going to be our central atom, um, and I would put your three oxygens around it. And if you're only going to single bond the oxygen, then that means that you have to have six extra electrons around each oxygen. Well, I didn't leave very much space for myself. Uh, sorry. Okay, so at that point, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, 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 twenty-four. On the single bonded, only single bonded, there's only twenty-four. So then we'd add the last two on the xenon for that structure. Okay. Um, and then we'll do the same thing again, but instead of having all single bonds, pick one of them to be a double bonded oxygen. Okay, so that'll change it slightly. And it doesn't matter, because of resonance, it doesn't matter which oxygen you pick to be the double bond, but then when you double bond the oxygen to complete the octet, you need to only put two unshared pairs on that double bonded O. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, 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 
before. And the, that one, again, you should also have an unshared pair left on xenon. Okay. Then the third structure, have two double bonds oxygen instead of just one. And your fourth one, have all three oxygens double bonded. Because xenon has enough to do it. Plus 
one half times four bonded. That would be zero. Okay, and then xenon. We have eight minus two dots plus one half times two, four, six, eight bonded. Four plus two. So that's a plus two? Okay. So we're getting better, but we're not really there yet because xenon's still too high. Okay. So now, on our third structure, we still have one oxygen that's single bonded, plus you, so we know that that'll be a negative one. And then we have two oxygens that are double bonded, so both of those oxygens will have a formal charge of zero. And so all we need to do is find the formal charge of xenon in this structure. And I'm going to do it up here, because I don't have enough space, really. Okay, so eight minus... 2 plus 1 half, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that would be 5, 1 plus 1. Yeah, okay. Awesome. That's doing better. But can we get a better one with this last one that all of them are double bonded? So on all of the oxygens, they're all a formal charge of zero. We've already proven that. And now for the xenon normal charge, not iron, and xenon. It's really double locked in, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You do it? See, I'm teaching you this, but, like, if you do it the way I taught you last year, or in Chem 1, two years ago, you'll get it right. Okay, so, <laughs> um, 8 minus 2 plus So most appropriate due to formal charges is this one right here because all four atoms involved have a formal charge of zero. Okay? Uh, that's where we're stopping for today.